it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. like a host of blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. My name is Pro. I'm Pro Motiva. And professionally, I am still a producer. But I'm a production manager at Cape Town TV. Africa Milano Weekend Breakfast Show host on Cape Talk and 702, which is part of Prime Media Broadcasting. I'm Siviwem Dota. I'm in the National Working Group of the Right to Know campaign. I'm Tony Weaver. I've been a journalist for 34 years, 35 years. Uh, the latest news, obviously, in for, uh, involving our public broadcaster has not really made any one of us more comfortable about the situation than a year ago or two years ago. It all started a couple of years ago when the ANC decided to bring in the concept or the notion of a secrecy bill, uh, which I think um, had a lot of us in the industry just worried about what does this mean and what uh, is going on. Uh, we sitting in in a, an industry that is under under considerable amount of threat as far as finances are concerned, and our boardrooms are essentially determining what editorial decisions uh, we need to uh, make, which is unfortunate. Uh, experienced journalists are leaving the industry, leaving the newsrooms rather uh, juniorized, and and. Therefore, those young junior reporters are easily manipulated one way or the other. Um, we're finding ourselves in a situation where uh, the country, majority of South Africans, and I speak on a correction, they're still very much uh, reliant on the SABC, for example, for its source of news. I think we see a lot of you know, accumulation of features of you know, what we used to see you know, under apartheid you know, from the... 70s when there was like a, your, your Black Wednesday, when uh, reporters were jailed, you know, for reporting certain things. So there's this story, this thing of this good story to tell, that the media focuses too much on the negative and does not report, you know, the positive. Uh, I mean, that's the media, mm. you know. Mm. That's mm. the media. Nobody wants to hear about uh, cats being rescued from trees, you know. We don't want that kind of journalism. This is what scares me about when power and corruption gets out of hand. I, I was on trial for nearly two years in the apartheid era, uh, era for reporting that the Google 87 were executed by the police. And I stated it on, on the BBC. Mm. Um, as I, I said, it was alleged. This is what the eyewitnesses alleged. Now, it emerged later that that is exactly what happened. They were executed and... Um, that's, I was called a terrorist in Parliament by um, Minister Louis Lekranji, who was then the Minister of Police, for reporting this. And that is what can happen when corruption gets out of control. You, you can get to that extreme. And that's what scares the shit out of me, is when we start looking down that very, very dark path. You know, there's a lot of cracks. And now it's no, it's no more an issue of serving, of informing the public, because I strongly believe you have to inform the people what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, you know, behind closed doors. Hence, we have um, organizations such as Right to Know. We want to know what's happening. We want to know what Zoom is doing. We want to know what each and every single department is doing because we have that right to know. Information um, enriches the nation. It enriches us young people to make informed decisions. South Africa needs a very strong, credible public broadcaster yeah. for a whole host of reasons, uh, including the fact that for a significant portion of our population, uh, the SABC is still is the primary source of information for those people. We are, what, a few days away from the local yeah. government elections. How is Madlamini in some rural part of South Africa going to be able to make mm. an informed decision regarding which political party they're going to vote for if if the public broadcaster is not meeting its mandate of informing that person of what they need to do and what they need to be uh, aware of. Right to know is very clear that Saudi is not the, you know, problem, you know. This issue is systemic. But the removal of Saudi is going to set the kind of precedence that we need, you know. Yeah. That if you are in a position that powerful and you take these particular decisions, basically, you know, you... You are, you are, your brief says you are a COO, but how you operate each day, you are editor-in-chief, you know. So uh, I think, you know, if you operate like that and you turn a public institution into some kind of a mouthpiece of a, of a, of a, of a political party, mm -hmm. then there should be consequences, you know. And part of the consequences, you know, should be that there should be public pressure that you need to vacate that post. The removal of Cloudy is step one 
and there's step two, there's step three, there's step four. But by removing that man, I think a lot of the problems that we're facing with the SABC will certainly be yeah. addressed. He's got ministerial prote protection. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, Baba loves Slaudi. You know, this is what was said. Um, it's, it's, the minister is totally behind him. And it's, it's, you know, look, everywhere in the world where there's a state broadcast, it's contested terrain. The BBC is very contested terrain in, in the UK. It's, uh, they're constantly, whichever party is the ruling party, they're, they're always trying to get more control over the BBC. I mean, I've, I've worked for them for a long time, I know. Um, uh, the National Public Radio in the States, uh, they're all very contested areas. But, I mean, what, what we've got happening here is total capture of the institution. But I think going back to um, Claudi, I, I personally think that he's not working alone, okay? I don't think he's the mastermind of everything that's happening at the moment. Because a lot of people, I hear a lot of debates and I, I really don't entertain them most of the times, you know? I'm not a journalist, as I said, but I have a lot of, um, done so many work when it comes to TV. But what I can honestly say is that he's not working alone, he's taking orders. and. I just feel, obviously, when I work with my team at work, you know, there's a specific way that I want them to work. But that, that doesn't only come from me. There's somebody else who's controlling me, and I'm then in return just enforcing that control to the work <coughs> so that they can actually meet the demands of what the station needs. So I personally think that probably, probably, I'm not saying it's like that, he is controlled by the ANC. What we see with Laodi, you know, I, I hear you, Pell that uh, Saudi is, is a messenger. Saudi is being protected, you know. But I do not think that we can sit down, we do not have the luxury of trying to find out who is behind Saudi. We need to put pressure at the point where we see things. Because it's Saudi that is making announcement that is creating this atmosphere at the SAPC. What we have to fear now in South Africa is the power of the intelligence agencies, the fact that the military, the police, and the intelligence agencies are getting such a grip on power, on state power, are so close to the presidency. Um, and a lot of, I think, what's happening now is being driven by the intelligence services. I keep getting echoes of the apartheid era, of what happens when, when the politicians start saying, hang on, the only way we can really control this thing is through what the, what the, the national party used to call krachtadigheid, you know, Clamping down, clamping down. What is happening on radio, you know, right now at SAPC is, is quite interesting, you know, that with this 90% uh, 90 content, you know, that a lot of people are ululating this, you know, whereas they do not see, you know, that underneath this sugar coat, there is a very serious element of censorship here, you know, because what is going to happen is that what kind of artists are going to get a play? Are, the, are they the kind of artists that are going to ask questions about the political system in the country? No. You know, definitely there's a lot of, they, 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 there's, there's this uh, resurgence of voices, particularly by young artists, where they are asking very serious questions about this mm -hmm. country through their music. But you don't get to hear that, you know, because we are all, you know, caught up in this euphoria of, of 90%. But the opportunity it represents is that there is an artist Psyche, for example, who I'll be seeing at the National Arts Festival this coming week, who's an incredible musician, who a month ago would probably would never have enjoyed airplay in a South African radio station because the kind of uh, music that Metro covers would be primarily R&B and hip hop and then uh, Afro soul, if you like, South African hip hop perhaps. And the kind of music that she plays doesn't quite fit into the genre. So therefore, because they've got plenty of international music, they don't have to look for a psyche of this world. So she would exist in the underground. The timing of this decision tied to the timing of the elections. You know, it was made in May. Mm. We have June month. June month is youth month. So we're gonna bombard the airwaves with, you know, June 16, liberation struggle, you know. Then we come to July. Then we have Madiba as a voiceover and all the Mandela praising songs, you know, being in the airwaves. And then shortly when we begin, you know, shortly when that month ends and then we begin Women's Month, you know, we have an election, you know. So we, we need to look at this. I, I, I agree. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a progressive decision. 
but it's a progressive decision whose timing is questionable. If you win the community, you've won the nation. Okay, because I mean, they strong, uh, extremely united. And they can actually, community township people around the, um, the township can actually make things happen. That's one thing. Hence, when they protest um, for service deliverance, they will like break things and they sending out a point that, look, if you're not going to give us water or this or free whatever, this is what's going to be happening. I think simple terms such as censorship needs to be explained to them. What is it? The things they worry about mm -hmm. are slightly more, for lack of a better word, basic than mm -hmm. that. They're worried about heating. They're worried about mm -hmm. not having their roof yeah. leaking at the end of the, uh, of, of the day when it rains. Mm -hmm. They're worried about what they're going to be having for dinner. Mm -hmm. They're worrying about having money to take a train that hopefully will show up on time to transport them to work and to school the very next mm -hmm. day. That's what they're worried about. Um, and they in some way, I suppose, accepting whatever it is that we're giving them as a, as a people who are producing uh, the stories out there, producing, but reflecting the stories out there and reporting uh, on them. Um, that's possibly why you do not have a busload of um, uh, Sescona-esque militant, motivated people who are taking to the streets, uh, throwing feces in order to ask and demand for, for a free press. Because I think um, there's possibly a lack of appreciation of how fundamental a right this is and how we need to be fighting for it as much as we're fighting for housing, for mm -hmm. sanitation, and for everything else, basically, that is of concern in South Africa right now. My dream is to live in a country where the government will think twice or thrice before it takes a decision that, will, that knows that it will help the people. My dream is that we go back to what we fought for um, before we got democracy, and that is a non-racial democratic South Africa. My dream is um, for the youth of today to celebrate life, to study more, um, to know, to remember and know that their freedom was fight for. My dream is that all South Africans would realize that in our constitution we have an extraordinary document and that each and every one of us must be able to hold it up and take it to any would-be politician, corrupt official, and say, not in my name. Yazi, you should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create a straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create a straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong